Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 A Garden and today we're going to be talking about roses. We're going to talk about the current roses I have in my garden. We're going to add two new roses this fall and then I'm also going to show you the roses that I am hoping to add in 2024. Now, I don't have a ton of roses in my garden. Roses has been something I've been kind of meh about getting involved in because I've always known them to be fussy. But now I'm getting to a point in my garden where I really want to start adding a level of elegance to the space. And what better way to do that than with roses? Roses are also an excellent cut flower. And y'all know I love growing cut flowers. And I think they add some really interesting color and interesting structure throughout the space. I'm especially drawn to climbing roses. And I have a lot of future hopes for climbing roses in multiple places, including the front of the shade garden and some of the arches um, at the back wall in the back garden. But I want to start with talking about the roses that I currently have in my garden, what my experience has been with them, and then we're going to talk about the two new roses that I'm going to be adding right now. Okay, this is one of the roses that I have in my garden. This is more of like a shrub type rose. This is a Proven Winners Urban Legend Oh So Easy Rose. It's been fun to grow. It did terrible its first year after I planted it, and then after then it took off. You can see some of the spikes are up to five feet. This one's probably closer to six feet up here. I'll probably trim some of those back in the spring. But yeah, it's been a really fun rose. Now, it is not a rose that I cut to bring inside. It is very heavily thorny. Let me get some close-up pictures so you can see. Okay, so here's the blooms. Very pretty. Love the color. I think they're so fun. So pretty really petite pretty I love the kind of bright yellow centers I think they're great this guy is crazy thorny y'all I mean all the way thorns all the place and should I had the opportunity to go back I would not have planted this because the thorns are so scary and intense um, so definitely not <laughs> my bag, but it is what it is. This rose is very happy in its location. And so I'm not going to dig it up now. It's pretty. It looks beautiful entwined with the lantana over here. And then over here is my American beauty berry. And so it looks just fresh and lovely. And it really did give me some amazing blooms this early spring and then now into the fall. Okay. The next rose I have is a Don Juan climbing rose. Um, this I planted late spring I believe it's done really beautiful in space it's only giving me a few blooms this year but I mean it is it's really liking its space so we're hoping for more, more blooms in next year I did plant it at a time like after um, blooming season it's done really well it's done okay I've gotten some frost damage from it already from our freezes even though it's like 85 86 degrees today yeah, for real. <laughs> and I really wanted this to be a romantic, just very, very whimsical kind of look. The headboard is from Facebook Marketplace. It's literally just a headboard. It's not an actual trellis or garden trellis, but it's worked great for this space. And this is going to be beautiful over the years as Don Juan climbs all over it. I would love to eventually train it this direction over the windows of my bedroom. For now, it's doing really nice. And I do look forward to blooms next year. So the next variety of rose I have is right here, and this is called Queen of Elegance. And I'm very meh about it. Um, it struggles with spider mites. It struggled with a lot of different things, and it does give me blooms. I'm not wowed by the blooms. I do think one thing I could do is move it from this location. I think that maybe it's not happy there. I am planning on planting most of my, all my new roses in pots so I can move them around easier throughout the space. I will say this has thorns, but it's not overly thorny, which is really nice. Um, I think what I need to do in the future is make sure I'm thinning this out um, better and then also maybe topping it a little bit better when it gets like really tight up here is when all the spider mites um, start to catch. But I think moving it from this location and maybe tucking it within an actual garden might be really, really nice. So far, yeah, about Queen of Elegance, I might give it another year or two. And I don't still love it. I might ask um, another friend or gardener if they want it to give it a new home. 
Okay, and then the final rose in my garden is this climbing rose called America. It's a very bright, corally pink color, and you can see some of the blooms over here. Um, I'll get a close up this so you guys can see. And it's done really well. It has been cut to the ground many, many times and come back over and over again. It is in this location because my hopes are to train it over the new entrance for the shade garden. And I think it'll do really well. It's been in this pot for a while. It's been pretty happy as long as I add compost to it. I will say all of my roses struggle with spider mites every year. And I'm not one to treat for spider mites. I kind of just let it happen. And I know you could treat, but y'all, I would be treating like every single plant in my yard because spider mites are just crazy here, especially with our historic droughts that we've had as of late. But I don't want that to keep me from continuing to try roses. So I just take a breath. <laughs> I let the spider mites have at it. And then all of the roses push a new foliage, which works out really, really well. Let me get a close up of this rose to show you. It's just a really beautiful coral tone rose, nice and big and fluffy, and it gets lighter the older it is. When it's newer, it's this darker tone. Um, it's a really, really pretty. I really love it. And I think once I can allow it to just go crazy over the shade garden entrance, it's going to do well. Now I did leave a lot of blossoms on the end that did not cut off to see if I might get any rose hips from this variety. I'm not familiar if it does that or not, because usually I've cut them back so significantly before the winter. So this will be really fun to check out. Okay, I'm under the willow today because... Even though it's like the second week in November, it's so hot. It's still so hot. It's still so humid. But I don't usually film under the willow. I, I think it's because it's slanted over here. I think I should probably try to film under the willow more often. So let's talk about the varieties. I should have turned this around. Check this beauty out. The varieties that I'm going to be adding in today. The first variety I'm going to be adding in, it's called Belinda's Dream. And it is a Floribunda shrub. Now there are a lot of different types of roses, hybrid tea roses, tea roses, floribunda, all, all kinds of different varieties. And I am no expert in any of those varieties. I do know that some varieties are better than others for cut flowers, like hybrid tea roses are excellent for cut flowers. And even though Belinda is not a hybrid um, tea rose, it is a floribunda, it's still supposed to be really fun for floral arrangements. Now Belinda's dream is about five, feet tall by four feet wide. It's considered a bushy shrub and its blooms are cupped and has about 40 um, uh, petals per bloom. And its foliage is medium green. This fragrance is moderate raspberry. The fragrance is Tedai 4. Absolutely gorgeous. And it definitely has like a fruity, a tart, fruity smell to it. It it smells absolutely amazing. And this is cold hardy in zones four to nine. Okay, so you might ask, Amanda, why all of a sudden you're wanting to add roses? Well, this rose is what actually led me to want to add roses. I was at Tractor Supply this summer and they had a sale. They're basically getting rid of all of their plants in there. And this guy was significantly discounted it and I got it for $2.50. So this whole beautiful rose for $2.50. Now it did not look like this when I got it. Um, it was much smaller. It just had a stem or two and maybe basically I've nursed it over the last almost three months at this point. I've just nursed it in its little pot, let it do its thing until I figured out what I was going to do with it. Well, so getting it at such a great place was awesome. So it made me feel better about going ahead and starting a rose collection. And then I ran across some planters at Walmart, which were extremely discounted as well. These are a plastic terracotta. Now I am wanting to put my roses inside containers. And in doing so, I want lighter containers because I don't always have my husband around to help me move stuff. So I didn't want to put them in big stone containers because I actually do want to be able to move uh, the containers around. I'm really wanting to add a lot more containers to my backyard and in this next spring I'm wanting to build basically some areas where I have drainage issues. I'm wanting to build up with rock and stone to allow myself to be able to put some planters there so that aren't absolutely drowning in water would be awesome. So that's why I kind of 
got on this direction. Now, with that being said, I picked out an additional rose that I've seen many times on YouTube channels that I really, really wanted. Okay, and that variety of rose is called At Last. And this is a um, variety from Proven Winter Winners. So Proven Winters, Proven Winners. And I bought this guy a while ago and I got him discounted as well. Originally 30, I think I got just like $25 or $5 off of it. So I got the thing for 25. So it's an Atlas, it's considered a landscape rose or a shrub rose. It is about three feet tall by three feet wide. So not overly large. It's hardy in zones five to nine. And I don't see it really talking about like petal count or anything along those lines. I was drawn to the color and there's nothing blooming here. So I'll put up um, some pictures of what it's supposed to look like. And I bought this one. The reason it was discounted is because it was also in bad shape as well. And so I thought I wanted to give it, I, even though I don't love the urban legend one that I'm growing, the oh so easy urban legend one, I love the color of this. It looks like it has less um, thorns, so hopefully that'll be the case. And the Urban Legend Oh So Easy Rose is very happy in my in my landscape, which makes me think this one would be happy as well. I like its brighter kind of orangey coral tone, and I think it'd be a really nice kind of different tone to add to my garden. So basically what, he, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with these two varieties and I'm gonna be working with these containers, like I said. Um, they only have one hole and drainage hole in the bottom. So I'm gonna have to um, add some drainage holes into the bottom as well. You definitely wanna have good drainage for your roses because you don't want them to rot. I'm also gonna be working with my BM7 um, soil mix and the fertilizer I'm gonna be working with is the Bio Advanced Rose and Flower Care. I'm gonna be adding that now. This is not the time to add fertilizer to your roses. I am gonna add some, but I'm not gonna add too much and I'm not adding a ton of organic material to um, these containers at this point. In the spring when it's real, well actually I should say, end of winter when it is time to start ramping up your roses and get them blooming that's a time when I probably will come back and add compost into these containers and then fertilize um, more often at this point in time we're not wanting to encourage that much growth I actually want these to start to go to sleep that's what I want them to go dormant for the winter if they put on a ton of growth right now, all that young growth, that new growth, will not will not do well during the winter. It's most likely going to freeze, get damaged, bring on um, pests or some type of disease at that point. So that's not something I really want to do. I'm also not really wanting to prune up my roses in the fall because it once again it tells the rose to produce more, and we're not really want to do that. Now, you can produce, you can tell it to do like you can prune a branch if. If you feel like you have a branch that's like leaning way over far and it's just going to be uh, you know laden with snow at some point and it might break which might lead to more disease you can do that these are long but they're not crazy long and once the roses are finished blooming on it this branch will come back up so i don't really feel like i need to handle that i recently pruned my don juan roses because they were going crazy that coming rose was insane and it really was hindering my garden right in front of it and so i did cut that back even though it's fall now i am going to be planting up my roses today and then probably closer to thanksgiving i'm going to be doing a um, video on winterizing my roses everything i'm doing on roses is like a beginner doing stuff on roses this is like me i've only probably grown 20 roses bushes ever in all of my gardening years and not all of them have been great you know most of them may be like yeah but I would like to focus much more on roses and learn a lot more so I am going to be going step by step throughout the year talking about my roses what I'm doing what's working what's not working and so that first step will be right around Thanksgiving winterizing my roses to deal and survive with the weather okay so let's go ahead and get started on these I'm going to pull off the plastic on this Okay, so my drill is at my mother-in-law's house because I've been hanging out curtain rods at her house. And so I left over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm gonna go ahead and plant these up. And then um, once I get my drill back, I'll just have them on something like this and I'll go from below and create some holes in it. Let's see if we can get this figured out where this will hold. So like I said, I'm just gonna be starting with my basic 
my favorite potting mix, which is called BM7. I get it from Homegrown Plants in Farmersville, Texas. A three cubic foot bag, this size bag is like 18, 17, 18 dollars, somewhere around there. And I really like it's kind of like light fluffiness. I think it's absolutely fabulous. So we're just going to start with a basic potting soil. Now, if it were next, like late winter, early spring, I would be adding a ton of compost into this. Is this going to fall over? But I'm not going to do that right now for fear of kicking off a lot of new growth and not have the these not having enough time to settle in for the winter. What I can do is in the spring, these will not be so far grown out that I can't like gently pull on them or pull out some of the soil around them and add in compost. But you rose experts, if you feel differently, if I should be approaching this in a different way, let me know. Okay, so let's put the atlas in here. Alright, so I'm not going to disturb the root ball very much. I'm just going to disturb it a little bit at the ends. The root ball is not like overly like tight or rooted. So I think it's in pretty good shape. And then we're just going to add in additional soil around the edges. Okay, we've got that one planted in. You do want to make sure that the crown of the root sits above the soil and basically the crown is you can kind of tell it's like part of the stem that looks like it's been exposed to air as opposed to being below the surface of the soil okay we've got that one done let's plant up the next one i'm pretty excited about this belinda one it smells so good i think that's probably why i'm most excited And roots look pretty good. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. I'm dripping. <laughs> okay, these look good. They're fun. I think like this one would be fun to eventually like add in some sort of trellis. That might be really neat to kind of look at. I'm not going to do it right now just because I don't, I don't know. Um, where I'm putting a lot of these yet. I'm really just wanting to be out in the space or tucked back in a garden or different ways. Roses pretty much need full sun, but I feel like that's a little bit different for Texas because during the summer, it'd be nice not to have full sun because they just fry. Um, so I think one of the great things about having them as containers is I can move them where to wherever I need them or wherever they're happiness, which is really great. So let me get cleaned up and then let's talk about the roses that I'm wanting to add to my garden in 2024. Okay, so it's actually the next day and it's raining and it's wonderful and lovely. So I wanted to talk to you all a little bit more about my journey for roses. So in the beginning when I started gardening, I really just focused on what was easy. And then over the years I've gained confidence. And I think that's what happens for a lot of gardeners. You try a whole lot of things in the beginning to see how they do. I didn't have a lot of luck with roses earlier on because I don't think I really knew like where to put them and how to prune them and how to care for them. And I felt nervous about it. But over the years, I definitely gained a little bit more confidence. I don't typically buy a lot of rose bushes. Um, they are tend to be a little bit more of an expensive plant, but they are a shrub. And so it is a plant that's going to, you know, give you years and years and years um, of beautiful blooms. So we also deal with RRD, which is a rosette disease for roses. And it has a few different things that make it very distinctive, such as a witch's broom, which is just like this massive growth, extra thorny, bright red leaves um, that kind of show that it's diseased. And this is um, spread through mites that are blown around the wind through the air. So it's very easy for it to pa um, pass from plant to plant. And so that has also been something that's kind of made me a little bit more hesitant because I didn't want to invest a lot of money only to have it um, struggle with the disease the next year. So that's also been another thing. And basically, if your rose gets 
this disease, the best thing to do is to dig it up and toss it away, um, throw it away, bag it up, seal the bag and throw it away. You don't want to burn it. You don't want to add it to your compost pile, nothing like that, because you don't want to continue the spread of the disease. And so that's also something like, you know, I'm hesitant because I spend a lot of money on the plant and then if it gets a disease, then I have to get rid of it. It sucks. But I feel like now I'm at the point where I need some of these kind of elevated um, looks of the roses within my garden. And I want that because I want this romantic, whimsical garden. And I think roses really lend themselves to that fairy tale look. So that's why I've started doing way more research on roses. Now I go to my public library all the time and the books I'm about to show you are books that I've actually checked out multiple times. Some of them I'm getting to the point where I should just buy them. The first one is called Vintage Roses by Jane Esto. Um, photography by Georgie Anna Lane and basically it talks about all varieties of vintage roses my favorite thing is just to look at the pictures because they're stupid gorgeous and it's a really great inspiration for different varieties of roses and it gives you a lot of information about the roses all of the details on them so that you can look through and see if there's anything that sparks your in, um, imagination you want to add to your particular garden and then perhaps look those up and see if you can obtain those particular ones this is a really fun easy book to go through the next one is probably my favorite one and it's called climbing roses by Andrew Mikulowski which y'all know I'm gonna butcher those this one has been very inspirational it's a very simple book but basically it talks about how to care for and what to do with um, climbing ro roses different varieties growing habits all that kind of stuff and it's been wonderfully inspirational because I really want to have way more climbing roses within my garden. Um, it's something that I'm very drawn to. I think it's the whimsical, romantic quality of climbing roses. And this has been really, really fun to go through. It talks about all different ways to trellis them. It's been really, really wonderful. And this, if I were to buy any of these books, this is probably the one that I would buy a copy of because I really, really enjoy it. And then finally, the last one is called Right Rose, Right Place by Peter Schneider. And basically, this is a, like a, basically a how-to. So it talks about where to put things in beds, borders, different landscapes, sun, shade, all different varieties. And um, it's kind of... I feel like it's pretty wordy, but there's a lot of good information in here and it talks about different varieties and what varieties are good for different things, which I think is great. Also, the photography is very important to me. I'm not good at looking at some of the older gardening books that I don't have any photos. I'm drawn to color and I'm a very visual person. So I want beautiful, gorgeous photos. Um, but these are the books that I consistently check out of my public library. Now my public library maybe has 12 books total on roses. They don't have a whole lot. And even gardening, they if they had more than 200 books on gardening, I'd be shocked. Um, but so I do do a lot of research on YouTube, on Google, on a lot of different places online as well but there's just something about having a book in hand and I tossed this in my bag like last night I was at my daughter's um, dress rehearsal for the Nutcracker and I had this in my bag and I was just pouring through it and I just it's it's very soothing and wonderful I love looking at the photos but let's go ahead and talk about the list of roses that I've been creating for myself and why I'm looking at these particular varieties basically a lot of things I was looking for is are there other gardeners growing these roses in my area? If so, are they dealing with a lot of disease? How well do they handle the heat and drought? I'm also looking online to see what people are talking about about these particular roses. I also love a really full, beautiful look of a rose, and I'm also looking for roses that are great as cut flowers. So let's talk about those particular varieties. Okay, so the first variety is called Earth Angel, and I have seen some other people growing this particular rose. I think it is incredibly romantic looking rose, which is the main reason I was drawn to it. Um, it's described as a peony shaped rose with bright glossy green foliage. Um, it has a hint of elderflower, champagne, and a dash of raspberry with a little bit of a lemon um, scent to it. 
Um, it is considered a floribunda rose, so it's going to be several blooms at the end of the stem, um, which is a really great look, especially for cutting. This is a really great as a cutting um, flower. It's great as a um, fragrance, and it's excellent for containers, which is really important to me because I am going to be doing all of my new roses in the spring. I'm going to do, be doing all of them in containers. So it says it's also hardy zones five to nine. It's about five feet tall by four feet wide, which is a very manageable size for me. Um, but that is one of the ones on my list. Okay, the next variety on my list is called Cinco de Mayo, and I was drawn by the color of this. It is not orange, it's not red, it's it's really hard to describe. What they write about it is that it's a unique color of smoky lavender and rusty red orange. And just the idea of that lavender and then like an orange, like I, I'm just so drawn to that. It absolutely sounds beautiful. It smells like a mild sweet apple scent um, and it is a continual blooming rose. So it's good in zones five to 10 and um, it produces, it says produces plenty of three and a half inch flowers, which I think sounds great. This is also a floribunda, so it's gonna be a plethora of flowers right at the end of the stems. Um, it's clustered and double blooms, which I think are beautiful. It's really great for pots also. You're also gonna see like most of these varieties I'm interested in are really great in containers. Um, it is good, I said zones five through 10. It is a continual blooming one, so it's not gonna to just give you one flush and be done it's going to continue to give you blooms throughout the entire season and this is about three three to four feet by three to four feet so it's a little bit of a smaller shrub okay the next variety is julia child and i once again was drawn by the color i don't want all my roses to be the same color and y'all know how i am in my garden i have a lot of color i i like all the color i think it's great i like to have choices um, especially when I'm cutting for arrangements. So I don't try to stay in one particular like color family. Um, in fact, a lot of times I'll force myself to put colors that I'm not usually using into my garden just to experiment and have fun. I don't want to restrict myself. I don't want to say that I don't like this one color. I'm not going to put it in there because you might be surprised adding in a particular color, how much it helps the colors that you love so much pop and stand out. And so the Julia Child one is a beautiful yellow and I love yellow. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It has a licorice scent, which I think sounds very cool. It's a buttery golden yellow four inch blooms with a lower petal count, only about 20. So I think it has a little bit more of a wild rose look to it rather than like this beautiful kind of David Austin, like thick layered rose. Um, and it is a continual blooming plant as well. It's also a floribunda. Once again, floribunda and heirloom tea are really, uh, heirloom tea, hybrid tea are really good for cut roses. And so you'll see that those are the varieties that I'm choosing. Um, it says it's excellent for cutting. It is hardy in zone six through 10, continual bloomer once again, and three to four feet by three to four feet as well. Okay, so the next variety is called Coco Loco, and the reason I'm drawn to this is because this is actually a bloom that I used when I was designing floral as a florist, and it's a highly sought after bloom and a very expensive bloom, and it is a neutral rose, but I think a lot of times Coco Loco lends itself to a little bit of a lavender undertone, even though it's considered a neutral rose. Um, it is a kind of a mocha brown with slight chocolate to lavender undertones, four and a half inch blossoms, with uh, pointed buds and slowly open to gorgeous vintage looking very full flowers with moderate fragrance um, it is a floribunda once again a very full look it's great in pots and containers once again um, and it is good and hardy it's hardy in zones six through ten it's a repeat blooming um, so it's not a continual bloomer so I want to make sure I point out the difference. A repeat bloomer is probably it's going to give me one flush in the spring and one flush in the fall. The continual bloomer is just going to continue to give me um, just flushes of blooms throughout the entire season. And this one is about three to four feet tall by three feet wide. Okay, the next variety is supposed to be a variety that's supposed to grow really well in my Texas area. It's supposed to be really drought tolerant. It's supposed to do really good. So this variety is called Garden Sun, and it is large clusters of yellow apricot flowers appear early in the season and continue to put on a show of flushes throughout the warm season. It's a prolific bloomer with large cup blooms, excellent disease resistant, and holds up well in the heat. 
Um, it is a climbing rose, and so it's something that I would be adding to either a large trellis or I'm looking for a climbing rose to go over my shade garden entrance. I'm also looking to add climbing roses to the back trellises at the back part of the backyard garden. Um, and I love climbing roses. Once again, absolutely love them. Um, it's also known as Amber Glow, Goat Borgs, Rosarium, and Mishka. Um, there's some of its alternate, alternate names. It's excellent for cutting. It is hardy in zones five through 10. It's a repeat blooming. So I'm going to get one flush and then potentially another flush. It is about 10 to 11 feet tall by four to five feet wide. And then the last variety is probably is a very popular rose and I think that's why I'm drawn to it. I've seen it in a lot of different places, but it's a very romantic look and the variety is called Princess Charlene de Monaco. It's also known as PCDM, which is just an, um, the, uh, I guess it's the acronyms. It's just the first letter of each of the Princess Charlene de Monaco. And it is a beautiful, like apricot to soft shell pink color. Um, it has like a hundred petals in each bloom. It's absolutely gorgeous, full lush bloom, beautiful. Um, it is a repeat blooming pattern of this rose from spring all the way through fall. Fall makes it great option for cut flowers. It's a glossy dark green foliage, um, but it's very eye-catching and incredibly disease resistant, which I think is really great. It is a hybrid tea rose, which I also talked to you as um, another variety or another type of rose that's really great for cutting. And its blooms are super full. It's known for its cutting flowers and for its fragrance and it is hardy in zones five through ten repeat blooming and about five to five and a half feet tall by two to three feet wide so I like it's a little bit um, smaller structure side to side which I think is wonderful okay so I hope you all enjoyed a tour of my current roses the two new roses that I've added basically the books that I'm looking over and enjoying and then the roses that I'm looking to add in the spring. I don't know if I'm going to be adding all six of those roses. That seems a lot for me. I would love to maybe add three, um, but we'll see. I mean, maybe there'll be an amazing sale <laughs> and I can add some of them. That would be awesome. Now the two roses that I planted out, it's raining, so I'm not going to be able to go back outside and show you. Basically, I'm going to pull them under my patio. They're going to go on those shelves that I typically have my terracotta plants on, my planters on. And I'm going to hook up a drip system to them. So they're going to get watered about maybe every five to six days. Um, and they should be fine in their pots overwintering. Um, I'm not really concerned since they both have pretty extensive root systems already. It's not like I'm starting with a bare root rose. Um, they both are, I think, hardy enough that they'll be fine dealing with all of the colder weather, especially since most of them are good down to zone five. All right, so now is your time. Tell me what roses I should be growing. And I would really love to hear what your absolute one favorite rose is. Your tried and true, makes you feel good, gives you joy every time you see it. It's not, doesn't get lots of disease, just something absolutely wonderful. List your favorite rose down there. I am going to be continuing to study about roses. I will be posting a video around Thanksgiving about winterizing my roses. This will be me going through winterizing my roses for the first time, actually taking the time to go through all the steps and take care of them. And I will be posting that video so you guys can see what it looks like for a beginner to be doing that. Hey, in a couple of years, I won't be a beginner anymore on roses. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And be sure to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's Matt Gardner or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.